Okay, Larry, it's time for the theme song. Uh, y yeah, Bob. What do I do? Hmm, let's see. I know, you play the guitar. Bob, I don't have any hands. Oh, you're right. Well, okay, well, you play this. I don't want to play that. I'll look silly. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. Nope, not going to do it. It's for the kids. Oh, okay. But they better not laugh. All right, better get on out there. If you like to talk to tomatoes, if a squash can make you smile, if you like to waltz with potatoes up and down the produce aisle. Have we got a show for you. Celery, gotta be vegetables. Lima beans, collard greens, peachy keen vegetables. Cauliflower, sweet and sour, half an hour vegetables. There's never ever 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 been a show like vegetables. There's never ever 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 been a show like vegetables. It's time for vegetables. Kids, I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. Welcome to Veggie Tales. And now Larry and I have gotten a lot of letters with questions about sharing. We sure have. When do I have to share? Why do I have to share? Whatever happened to Funny and Share? Questions, questions, questions. Uh, yeah. A anyway, we decided to tackle all your sharing questions in one show. So. Oh, yes, yes, Bob! Uh, uh, what is it, Archibald? We're in the middle of a show. Oh, yes, exactly! I, I couldn't help but notice that in King George and the Ducky, you let Jimmy and Jenny put on a show. Uh, yeah, but it uh, didn't work out very well. Uh, understandably so, uh, them being them and all. Uh, you see, I've noticed that to date, VeggieTales has been somewhat lacking in the taste and culture department. Your point? I'd like to do a show. It'll be great! You'll love it! It's about sharing, Bob. Oh, all right. But if you get into any trouble, uh, let us know, okay? Oh, don't worry about a thing! Huh? <laughs> Prepare to be dazzled! All right, fellows, bring out the set! Oh, you're really in for a treat! Fireplace! The fireplace! The chair! The chair! The water! The water! The ambience! Oh, it's just like you want it. Exactly. Oh, yes. <laughs> Lovely. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us this evening for what promises to be a cultural tour de force of veggie programming. For our first story, we present the world's first all-vegetable staging of Shakespeare's classic, Hamlet. Ah, uh, did you get the script? Well, actually, this Hamlet, she was very hard to find. But we found something very similar. Oh, similar! Omelette? Just the name, she makes you hungry, no? What? Uh, the... Archibald, is everything all right? What? Oh, yes, uh, of course. Ahem. Then, well, off we go. <laughs> Presenting Shakespeare's classic, Omelette. The troubled Prince Omelette requests his daily eggs. Cooked light and fluffy. Doth not the troubled prince know that these are the last eggs in the entire kingdom? But of course. Why do you think he is troubled? Will the prince not share his eggs with his starving people? Perhaps. 
Perhaps he'll think about that over lunch. <sighs> the prince's egg's coming up. Ow! Just step back at my feet. Woe is me! I am troubled! Alas, forsooth, the country is rapidly running out of eggs. The people are starving, and I am helpless to help them. What will become of my kingdom? Aha! Something's cooking in the state of Denmark. Your eggs, Prince Omelet! Cooked light and fluffy! The last eggs in the kingdom! The last poor yolks! I'll chew them well, Horatio. But soft, it is Ophelia! But soft, it is Ophelia! But I don't want to do it! It's embarrassing! Oh, no, we're ridiculous! It's tradition! In Shakespeare's day, all the women's roles were played by men! I think we're gonna get letters about this. It is I, the fair Ophelia. Uh, pray thee, what news, fair Ophelia? I beseech thee, my lady. Oh, my lord, I come with disparaging news. More bad news? The people, my lord, they're starving. There are not enough eggs for them. Meanwhile, you feast on eggs every day, cooked light and fluffy. Tis rottenness that has beset the fair kingdom. And on top of that, my eggs are getting cold. Oh, my troubled prince, I beseech and implore thee, please share, share your eggs with the people. Share my eggs? Share my eggs? Then I won't have any. What are you thinking, Pharophilia? <gasps> Simply this. God says he likes it when we share our blessings. Goodbye. Can I take this off now? To eat or not to eat? That is the question. Whether it is nobler to share my eggs, cooked light and fluffy, or to scarf down the whole thing myself. To share or not to share? What you doing there, young lad? Just playing, your highness. Ah, are you just gonna keep playing like that, uh, alone? Uh, I don't know. Would you like to share my game? Well, sure. Playing's the thing. Great. Just guess where you think my ships are. Oh, okay. To be. Uh, not to be. Drat. Uh, your turn. Hey, what's that? Oh, uh, that would be mine eggs, uh, cooked light and fluffy. It looks quite yummy. Uh, might I try a bite? Ah, I, I, um, well, um, sure, uh, sure you can. Hey! What? Uh, me thinks I just shared with you, uh, didn't I? Uh, me thinks you did. Ha! Sharing? Uh, you know, that, that wasn't so bad. Uh, ac actually, it, it felt pretty good. Your Highness, uh, the things God wants us to do for others uh, usually make us feel good, too. You called your Highness? Uh, no, not yet. My mistake. Oh, servant? You called your Highness? Uh, yes, uh, call everyone together. I have an announcement to make. Mary, your Highness? Denmark, I have decided to share my eggs with you! Yay! Because God likes it when we share our blessings. Yay! But sire, there aren't enough eggs to go around. Where do you find these eggs anyway? Oh, you know, uh, they're the little white round things that uh, come out of chickens. What? We thought those were ping pong balls. We got plenty of those. Eggs cooked light and fluffy for everyone! Yay! Yeah. Hey, I have an idea! Why don't we name these light 
and fluffy eggs after our beloved prince. I give you the omelette. Hey, hey, boss, where might I find some toast? Get thee to a bakery. Did you understand any of that? Not a word. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show. Stop! Stop! Don't even think about it! As if omelette wasn't bad enough. Ahem. <clears throat> Philippe? Jean-Claude? Oui? Really? <laughs> and now it is time for Classy Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a classy song. One day, while he was waiting for the trolley, he had a hat, my high silk hat. He wore it high upon his head so proudly, a beautiful hat, my high silk hat. A hat like this just makes him feel so grandly, now fancy this, and fancy that. The splendor of this hat in all its majesty, like a king in a royal cap. I feel so swell and handsome in my hat I bet that others wish they had In fact, a hat as this, a hat as that A hat so fine, a high so hat Oh, Mr. Art Bugatti, now what do you think of that? Now his hat was not all he wore so proudly I must, in fact, share more than that For upon his lap there sat a treat so fungy Of chocolate this and chocolate that Deliciousness that makes him feel so dandy A chocolate bliss A chocolate snack Inventions such as these are more than candy Somewhat like mine, a box so that I have my chocolate placed upon my lap I feel so good you just cannot top that I have my snack of chocolate pack of chocolate this and chocolate that Oh golly Mr. Nazar, now what do you think of that? Time was passing and the sun grew hotter upon his hat. And so was that. So beneath his hat he thought and pondered. What should I do to save my hat? He thought and contemplated as he perspired beneath his hat. Upon his hat. He feared his chocolate treats would soon retire and to a pool. A chocolate bath. I won't feel grand if I take off my hat The sun's getting hot and my hat just might go flat My hat just might go flat and my sweets will melt like that Oh hurry Mr. Trolley before my dad furnace goes flat He decided to forego his look so dashing to save his hat And need a snack So he placed the treats upon the seat beside him And put his hat on top of that Oh please, oh, please, oh, please. don't anybody sit close to me, close to me. Upon, my hat. upon my hat. I ask if all of you could be so kindly and just stand back away from my snack. A great big squash just sat upon my hat. A great big squash just squished my hat real flat. He squashed my hat, he made it flat. He squished my snack. Oh, what a that! Oh, tell me anybody, now what do you think of that? A great big squash is standing on his hat. A great big enormous squash squished his hat the black. He squished his hat, he made it black. He squished his hat, oh, what a that! Oh, golly! Uh, what's your name? They've never given me a name. I've been around since show one, and I still don't have a name. Now, what do you think of that? Well, uh, that was interesting. Okay, Archibald? Oh, just fine, thank you. <laughs> uh, ahem. 
You'll be glad to know, folks, that we have saved the best for last. It has long been rumored that Gilbert and Sullivan, the brilliant musical duo, penned one last musical before their deaths. This musical, legend has it, was lost before it could be staged. Well, if my cohorts, Philippe and Jean-Claude, are correct, we have that lost musical. The fellows? Ah! Oh, oh! We have it right here! Right here! The last musical of this Gilbert and Sullivan! Mais oui! Oh, splendid! Let me have a look at it. Oh, here it is! Gilbert and Sullivan present Lyle the Kindly Viking! A musical pop up book! Well, get ready for a truly historic event! Once upon a time, there was a little village by the sea where there dwelt a band of Vikings. Good morning, Mabel. How are you, dear? Oh, just fine and dandy. Is Harold round here? I haven't seen him. But that's no surprise. Olaf's gone too. Mm -hmm. They're out with the guys. We should have listened to our mothers and married more judiciously. But we pick men with metal hats who sail across the sea. You live and learn. We married Vikings. What do you know? The terrors of the sea. They're Vikings. Wherever they go, pillaging happily. They're Vikings. Let there be no ambiguities. Cause this is my life as a Viking one. We have to admit it is right with strife. But that's the lot we got when married we. The terrors of the sea. Oh, look what the cat drug in. Wonder what they brought back this time. Uh, there's your wife, Olaf. Mm, yep. And there's your wife, Harold. Oh, boy. Do they love us or what? Well, what's not to love? I mean, after all, we're Viking. What do you know? The terrors of the sea. We're Viking. Wherever we go, pillaging happily. We're Viking. Let there be no ambiguity. Viking, cause who doesn't like a pile of loot? Some gold and jewels and a shiny suit. And a giant screen TV to boot. A Viking life for me. Yo ho. We're Vikings. So what do you know? The terrors of the sea. We're Vikings. Wherever they go, pillaging happily. We're Vikings. So let there be no ambiguities. Cause who doesn't like a pile of loot? This is my life as a Viking wife. Some gold and jewels and a shiny suit. The empty wing is right with strong. And a giant screen TV to boot. A pencil up with a So that was the life of a Viking. Pillaging and plundering. Uh, those are fancy words for, well, for taking other people's things. They were stealing. Uh, their boats were so fast that no one could catch them, so they could get away with it. But not all the Vikings were involved in this unfortunate practice. Uh, no, uh, there was one in particular. His name was Lyle. Good morning, Lyle. Good morning. You missed another raid, Lyle. I know. I was making stuff. Lyle never went on the raids. Instead, he'd stay home and make crafts. Uh, uh pot holders, to be exact. What you got in the bag, Lyle? Pot holders. You want one? Oh, you gave me one last week, but thank you. Here's your share of the loot, Lyle. Uh, don't worry, it's the least we could give you. Thanks. Now, Lyle was definitely an unusual Viking. Whenever the other Vikings returned from a raid, he would take his small bag of loot, uh, plus a bunch of potholders, and head out to sea on his own expedition. Hi, Sven. Hi, Otar. As you can imagine, this puzzled the other Vikings quite a bit. What's up? With Lyle, what's up with Lyle? 
I'm telling you that boy doesn't fit the Viking style. Since 793, our strategy's been clear. Go get stuff from over there and bring it over here. You know that little guy? He's got me feeling all contempty. He takes his boat out loaded up and brings it back in empty. What? What? What is up with Lyle? Yes, uh, well, uh, no one could figure out what Lyle was up to. So two of the other Vikings, uh, two fellows named Sven and Otar, decided to follow him and find out. You guys go ahead. We'll catch up. Uh, Sven, you don't have to sing. But it's a musical! Uh, yeah, I know, but you don't have to sing every line in a musical. Uh, talking is okay, too. Oh, okay. So very stealthily, they followed Lyle across the sea. No, you're too close. He's gonna see us. No, 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 Sven, no. Sven, I'm not close enough. Would you just let me? We're gonna lose them. I'm just trying to get closer. I... No, no, too close. I no, do... no. Would you just? And much to their surprise, he led them right back to the monastery they had raided the night before. What? Huh? What is he doing? Uh, but can I see? Uh, but Sven, no. hold on, hold on. You, just I, a minute. I, I wanna. Come would on. You, would you just? No, let go. I got Give me the freedom. Um, those were Olaf's. Dear monks, dear monks, what can I say? My friends have taken your things away. Dear monks, dear monks, what can I do? I've come to bring some back to you. I cannot make it all come back. For they are bigger and older But I'll share what I have in my little sack And a few of my own pot holders Hey, it's the thought that counts Dear little Viking boy You can call me Lyle Oh, okay <clears throat> Dear Lyle, dear Lyle, we like your style For we were all despairing But you rowed your boat for many a mile To practice an act of sharing Boys? Thank you, thank you, Viking Sven and Otar were very confused. I'm confused. They returned home and waited to confront Lyle. Not so fast. Don't take another hop. We know where you've been, and we think it's gotta stop. Huh? We Vikings rule the seas. We pillage and attack. We never say please, and we never give stuff back. Not to mention the potholders. You both care about your share of gold, so rare, and big TVs. But when I share, I get my share of friends. Do -do 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 Use a golden goose is no excuse for being mean. When I share, I get 
my share of friends. Do, 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 Yeah. Well, Sven and Otar had never thought about it that way. Could sharing actually give them more of what would make them really happy? Even they had noticed that watching that big screen TV wasn't all that fun by yourself. They needed to give that a little more thought. In the meantime, though, they knew Lyle would be in big trouble if Olaf learned what he was doing. If Olaf finds out, you'll be in big trouble. Uh, you can just talk. Oh, right. <clears throat> if Olaf finds out, you know. Well, Olaf's not gonna find out. This will be our little secret. Thanks, guys. So they resolved not to let Olaf find out. Unfortunately, this was easier said than done. Just a few days later, as the Vikings were headed out to raid the monastery once again, it was the only monastery in the area, Otar spotted something. Oh no! What is it? It's Lyle! He's at the monastery! <gasps> if Olaf sees him, he's in big trouble! What do we do? We've got to distract Olaf! Look, Olaf, there's a fish with a pretty yellow circle at the bottom of the backside of his fin. Look, Olaf, there's another and another and another. And a little one has got a funny grin. Well, I don't oh, look, see Olaf, 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 way down underneath the water. It's the biggest fish I think I've ever seen. Look, Olaf, he's got purple spots and orange and yellow markings and a dorsal fin that's iridescent green. What? Otar, I don't see any of that. Sven, we've got to distract him. Help me out. Oh. Look, Olaf, there's a turtle and he's wearing pink pajamas and he's got a cowboy hat upon his lid. Look, Olaf, very close and see he's riding on a llama and he's chasing down the herd of giant squid. Look, Olaf, 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 There's a whale that's dancing with a bear. Look, Olaf, it's a mermaid. It's an ostrich. It's a bunny. Look, Olaf, please look anywhere but... I don't see anything. What? But there. Hey, isn't that Lyle? Mm-hmm. And he left something with those monks. What is it? It's... Potholders and the little bag of loot we gave him. <gasps> hey, that goes against the code of the Viking. You can say that again. Why, that little Viking is in big trouble. What do you think you're doing? I was... Giving them stuff back. Um, yeah? Well, now there's a storm of brewing, and you're the one that's under. an example out of this ex-Viking! You know, I think Harold is right. We gotta get out of here! Almost done! You'll see that nothing good comes from giving things back! Somebody to save us, too. Thanks, guys. We knew we could help you someday. But what about my friends? Ah, uh, uh, they were mean to us. I'm pretty sure God wants us to help everyone, not just the people who are nice to us. Oh, you're right. We're monks. We should know that, huh? All right, come on, boys. Let's save the Vikings. Ah, uh, can we put away the good silverware first? Oh, all right. So not only did the monks save Lyle, they saved all the Vikings from the storm. A 
friend just because Lyle had made friends with them by sharing. Thank you, thank you, our new friends. You saved us from the sea. Rest assured that we intend to share proficiently. We used to care about our share of gold so rare and big TVs. But when we share, we get our share of friends. So what's the use? A golden goose is no excuse for being mean. When we share, we get a share of friends. Does that mean we can't be Vikings anymore? Not necessarily, but I do think you need to change your song. We're Vikings, what do you know? The sharers of the sea. We're Vikings, wherever we go, sharing happily. We're Vikings, let there be no animosities. Cause our pillaging ways we will amend by sharing and caring and making friends. And finally our singing is at its end. The sharers of the sea. We're Vikings, the sharers of the sea. I need to go to the bathroom. Ah, uh, Sven, you can stop singing now. Oh. Right. Well, there you have it. The lost musical of Gilbert Jones and Sullivan O'Kelly? What? Well, that's not right. That's the wrong Gilbert and Sullivan. This wasn't their lost musical at all. We liked it. Oh, that's what I get for working with peace. I could have your union cards for this, you know. You'll never work on the West End again. Oh, we're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we uh, uh, learned today. And so what we learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say. You think they're going to be okay? I think they'll be just fine. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Well, Prince Omelette learned that God wants us to share, and that sharing can actually feel pretty good. Yep, and Lyle taught all the Vikings that even though sharing doesn't get you more stuff, it does get you more friends, and that's even better. That's right, Larry. Well, let's see if the Bible says anything about sharing. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Hebrews 13, 16. Hmm. So God likes it when we share. Yep, and so do the people we share with. Well, we're out of time for today, so remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Goodbye! Goodbye. Oops, sorry! Bob, don't look. Just roll the credits, Larry. Roll the credits. Vikings, what do you know? The sharers of the sea. We're Vikings, wherever we go, sharing happily. We're Vikings, let there be no animosity. Doesn't fit the Viking style. Since 793, our strategy's been clear. Go get stuff from over there and bring it over here. You know that little guy? He's got me feeling all 
contempty. He takes his boat out loaded up and brings it back in empty. What? What? What is up with Lyle? Look, Olaf, there's a fish with a pretty yellow circle at the bottom of the backside of his fin. Look, Olaf, there's another and another and another! And that little one has got a funny grin. Oh, Olaf, 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 wait, I'm underneath the water. It's the biggest fish I think I've ever seen. Look, Olaf, he's got purple spots and orange and yellow markings and a dorsal fin that's iridescent green. What? Share.